Verizon post game interview. I'm here with Jojo after his first game at Wolf 2022. Thank you so much for joining me. Even though the game didn't go the way you expected, the desk was talking about how, given your draft, you had to be good in the early game, especially when it comes to the bot lane matchup or the top lane matchup going better as well. What are the takeaways from this game and how do you know next one is going to be better? Yeah, I mean, that was definitely our plan to snowball the early mm -hmm. game and I think we did that well. Bot lane was up like double mount or CS in like six minutes, so I thought it was going yeah. well. Um, I mean, I have to watch the game again. I'm not too sure what happened, but um, I just didn't think we played as well as them, obviously. So we just got, I just got to review the game and see. Just think about the next one. And I, I know that your coach yesterday said that it was important for you guys to know which players you would be facing on the bot lane. Can you tell me more about this maybe and how it impacted your prep that you didn't know beforehand that Hidesang wouldn't be playing, for instance? Um, I mean, Hillisang not playing, we knew for a while, so we prepped that already, but when they announced that upset would play, we had to change our play style. We know that he really likes to be strong side and that, mm -hmm. you know, he really likes to get all the resources while Bean doesn't really do that as much. Yeah. Um, so we just had to, we tried prepping around that. Um, obviously, it didn't work out as it should have, but, you know. Hopefully, happens. he'll get them next yeah. time, best of five. But um, um, talking about the bot lane, Kerry is one of the newest players in the lineup. You were in this situation at MSI, actually, being one of the uh, rookies from EG. Can you tell me how it's going for him and maybe if you guys have been able to help him be ready for this world? Yeah, I mean, Kyra has definitely improved. Yeah. Um, he gets better like every time we scrim and he's very good at laning too. But we just got to, I mean, as a team, we just got to work together better and we got to get more used to him still. Mm -hmm. So but I think once we're, you know, used to each other more and more, then it'll be even easier. For sure, for sure. Uh, getting the better synergy. But more about you, though. This is your second international event. How much stronger do you feel this time around? And what is this world going to be about for you? How much stronger from MSI? I mean, I think individually mm -hmm. we all improved from MSI, but I'm not sure yet. I mean, we have to keep playing and scrimming more, to be honest. We haven't scrimmed too much and too many good teams since we just arrived, like, yeah. not too long ago, so, um, in Mexico, so... I have to see. I can't really give like a good okay. judgment yet. Okay, I hope you can get the uh, practice you need to be on top. Last question for you. Of course, we love the banter you give us on social media. Mm -hmm. Budget G2, talking about Fnatic, can we expect more from you at World? Oh yeah, it definitely <laughs> sucks tweeting that and getting shit on yeah. basically, but... Um, you know what, it sucks, but we, I think we can beat them honestly. Yeah. We just gotta really know what went wrong this game and I think we'll be fine. I like that you own it, even though, I mean, yeah, that, that's something that not a lot of players do lately, Venter. So thank you for doing that, Jojo. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you. Good luck on the next game. And back to you guys in LA. Thank you so much, Lore. And Jojo, they're affirming a lot of, uh, you know, uh, kind of our preconceptions of that matchup, identifying the bot lane as a major strength and, and very consciously choosing to play a style that they mm -hmm. felt could hold them down. Of course, we talked about kind of the importance of execution then when you yep. choose a composition like they did, kind of fell apart. They'll check the tapes, like he said, and try and revamp and get ready next time around. But reminder to everyone, best of ones, that was your shot to take down Fnatic. And so you find yourselves in a one game hole, still definitely not outside mm -hmm. of, of qualifying to groups, but pressure starts to mount more and more as you drop a game at a time. Yeah, it definitely becomes harder. I do like that they came in with, again, a, like a good idea. We were actually just talking about this before coming on, where Jack, you were saying like maybe Caitlyn Lux, because they know Upset wants all the resources. Yeah. JoJo confirming that, hey, we know Upset wants to be strong side, so let's try and sit him behind. So execution not there, but at least the idea was. I was going to say, you can absolutely follow the logic. So I'm yeah. not mad at the logic. Mm -hmm. uh, and just unfortunate that it didn't all come together in the way they may have expected. Now we're going to look ahead to our next matchup. Mega Bank Beyond Gaming faces a tough opponent in Loud, especially when they have some strong support behind them. Check it out. Salve para os meninos do LOL. Vai com todo, guys. A gente confia muito em vocês. Continuem com o trabalho bem feito que vocês vêm fazendo até agora. E é isso. Confiem em nós. Vamos para frente. Vamos estar assistindo e torcendo para você. Faz isso aí. Salve, rapaziada do CBLOL. Queria mandar aqui uma boa sorte para vocês e todo sucesso aí nesse Worlds, rapaziada. Tamo junto. Salve, guys. Só passando para dar boa sorte pro pessoal do LOL. Eles vão estrear no Mundial agora. Então, boa sorte e amassa, hein? Salve, galerinha. Pancada do Valorant aqui. Vim passar para desejar boa sorte para os moleques do LoL aí e sucesso nesse Mundial, para cima desses caras aí, bora! E aí, rapaziada, Saci aqui da Loud, sou aqui do Valorant agora, né, não do LoLzinho, só passando para desejar uma boa sorte para os meninos, comprei eles aí o ano inteiro também, né, que a gente tava no mesmo CT, então desejo tudo de bom para eles aí, que principalmente, né, no final eles se divirtam e eles têm tudo para dar certo aí e fazer história no Mundial. É isso, tamo junto! 
Uh, very cool That's to cool. hear so much support coming it. from Loud's Valorant squad. Uh, today, their brothers here at Worlds will fight with a legion of fans behind them. So for those of you, you know, who may only watch League of Legends, you know, yeah. uh, in your domestic regions and aren't familiar with an organization like Loud, uh, this is a massive organization with a massive footprint. Again, the most recent ch world champions of Valorant is that uh, Loud squad, but now their league team makes a debut here at Worlds uh, after only being in the ecosystem for so long. Yeah, it's actually crazy because, you know, I used to coach in Brazil back in 2019. Look at Loud this. wasn't even in League of Legends. Legends yet they, they were already had they had so much hype behind them everyone loved them the social media followers are absolutely insane I don't even know you can have that many people in your discord they have a bigger social media footprint than FaZe Clan which is pretty nuts and that wow. might be that might be a, a more familiar name to a lot of our viewers yeah. possibly but yeah loud actually by virtue of their social media numbers has a bigger imprint than FaZe having been an organization that has existed for far less time so again not a team that should be discounted both by their ability but also by the support that they have behind them yeah and they're infusing a lot of that fan support with some veteran league players you mm -hmm. saw their tin owns in mid lane robo and top lane very experienced players from the cb law brance is the young player on the team who's been able to find a lot of success right off the bat and we're just going to have to see how they perform on the world stage. It's a good point. You take Tin Owens, the biggest name in the region, put them on the biggest uh, org in the region, and that's a recipe for some success, if I do say so myself. Now, on the other side of the matchup is, of course, Mega Bank Beyond Gaming. So another squad that we have to talk about we, coming out of the PCS. Uh, let's talk about Road to Worlds, uh, you know, for these squads and what we can expect out of them here today. Yeah, it's not all about how you did in spring and how you did all the way through summer split. Look at this. So split one for both of these teams. Loud did not qualify for playoffs. They were seventh, Beyond Gaming fifth, sixth. At the end of the second split, Loud went on a seven game win streak to just finish fourth. Beyond was sixth in the regular season, but then playoffs is where they really turned it on. Loud did come from the loser's bracket with two three O's in a row in the loser's bracket final and in the grand final. And then Beyond Gaming beat what is a familiar name to many in PSG to make world. So a huge acceleration for both of these teams at the end of the year. Yeah, but Lear could also points to a fair amount of adversity that they've had to face all throughout the year. Yeah. So these aren't two teams that just have this, you know, pedigree of winning, this, you know, kind of, it, it, it's not a sure thing for them. They they are used to having to fight. And while, yes, they're peaking at the right time, that's also where I'm going to return to some of the things that we talked about at the beginning of the day, though, where playoffs for a lot of our regions mm. was a very different game of League of Legends than the kind of League of Legends that we expect to be played here on the world stage. And so when teams showcase their best placing, in order to qualify for Worlds when, when they were struggling in prior metas, that's when I wonder how they're going to grapple with a lot of the meta changes that yeah, we're seeing. Yeah, I mean, especially when, right, the old meta was all about AD carries. And, I mean, both both these teams' AD carries are doing a lot of work for them back in their regional leagues. For Beyond Gaming, a lot of their late-game carry is on Waco. Brantz, we said, I mean, first split in CB Law, now making it to Worlds is absolutely insane. Like, just looking at the difference in experience between these guys is crazy. I mean, heck, Waco started his career back in 2016 in the LMS as a mid laner. He's been, he's been to Worlds before. Brandt's definitely going to have uh, to, to show his stuff up against such an experienced player. Yeah, very interesting. Statistically, they look like very similar players. But that first graphic, I think, paints a very good picture of where the differences lie. And that is experience on one end. Uh, and a lack of on the other. Yeah, both actually very good statistics, regardless of how much experience they have. You can see though, Beyond Gaming do play more through their bottom lane overall. So we'll see how that manifests on stage. If I had to guess, Loud is gonna more likely play through mid and top, kind of like we saw Mad Lions playing earlier today. Yeah, and I think it makes sense, right? Even just hitting back before you bringing up a name like Robo. I mean, Robo has been a complete standout for this Loud squad this split. And he's someone who just has so much confidence. I love it. He was on the Flamingo squad that I coached in 2019. <laughs> we had Dom on in our group. And I just remember one meeting where we we're like, hey, so what if what if Nuggery, like we're gonna pick Camille. What if he, he counterpicks Fiora? He's like, ah, no, no, I don't care. <laughs> Let him pick whatever he wants. This man is fearless. So is this my this is my Camille uh, Fiora player for the day? Could be. Is that what we're getting? Is that what I'm being promised right now? 
Uh, I mean, I would love to see it. Uh, what about in terms of the styles in which these two teams play? We talked about like playing mm -hmm. towards the bot lane, but in terms of the, you know the overall development of the game, we get to the mid game, the late game. Who do you give the edge to? What are you looking for? I think I think if we get to mid late. Beyond has looked pretty good. And funnily enough, when I was talking to Clement Chu, Clement said the key word for Beyond is clutch. Like their mm. early game, apparently not so stellar. It all depends on who should have get them through the early game, but their mid and late game team fighting is where they pull it together. Yeah, and I I will say they'd absolutely love to fight. That's somewhat true for both of these teams, but whenever a team struggles so much in the regular split, they almost automatically get the clutch label. Right, yeah. because they, they clearly weren't blowing people away and they found a way to make it work in the end. Well, that, and that, but that's what Worlds is all about, making it work, right? Because again, we talk about best of ones. We talk about how usually the winning teams is the team, you know, is the team that is finding those clutch moments, is finding that one piece of, you, you know, unique creativity or the pick that's going to make it work. Uh, we still have some time to kill. Of course, we're working through uh, you know, getting players set up all throughout the day. And so, Jat, I'm being told we have enough time okay. to play a little game. Uh, really? Uh, that's what I was told. I don't want to I don't want to bait you, but I just got again. It's okay. time. So I'm going to okay. hand things over to you because we we've been ideating. A, I think. Yeah, they're right there. OK. Yeah. Yeah. yeah on the yeah. on the stage. So we need to show this shot. You yeah. guys have to come up here. Oh, right yeah. Right. We'll come to we'll come to we were right. in rehearsal the other day <laughs> and we were like, let's use this wall. This really big wall. We got a big wall. We got to use it. Wall. And we had Dash. You were standing way over on the other side. Yeah. And, and you two were over there. And I was there. over here. And we're like, there is so much space. It's a lot of space. It's weird. But <laughs> it's like, it's also really good for athletics. Mm, mm -hmm. And there's always this conversation at Worlds about the gap. Right. So how big is the gap? So we wanted to figure that out. But... We had to find something to draw an analogy to, right? Yeah. Like we can't just like in isolation be like the gap is okay. this big. We're, we're going to start. So like we got to start with the LPL, right? LPL, they're the world champions. They are the world champions. champions. They are the world champions. So like world champions. we can see this. So the LPL, yeah. I'll put a little lower. Yeah, it's, right there over the world's logo. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. They are the yeah. world champs. They are the world champions. The LPL. How big is the gap between the LPL and the LCK? Well, so if the idea here, by the way, this is a long jump pit. We didn't really describe. This is a long jump pit. For those of you who don't know what track and field is, long jump pit. Basically, the idea yeah. is, is a giant pit of sand. Uh, somebody would start from the back here, run, and at this point, boom, jump. All right? Yeah. So we're setting LPL at basically the world record mark all yeah. the way down at the end of the pit. So the idea is, where are the other regions along the long jump pit Correct. and therefore how far behind the LPL and other regions are they? That, that's what we yeah, want to figure out. Yeah, how possible is it to close the gap? So like, for instance, if the LCK, let's put the well, LCK like- You got the LCK? Oh, yeah, the LCK right up there. Right? I, I feel like we'd be a bit more generous. Okay, oh. so it's like, LCK. that's it's a, a pretty easy gap to jump. Yeah. Right. This is the idea, because we're going to have DRX versus RNG later in the day. So it's like for DRX to beat them, it would literally look like this. Like, yeah. that's pretty Ooh. easy. I feel like it requires a large so, gap. I'm actually going to debate you on that. Okay. Because here's the reality of how the long jump works. It's not jumping from your point to the next point. Okay. It's extending your jump that much more. Oh, no. Right? So so the LCK still has to leap from okay. here. And let's say they can land here right now, right? You're right that the difference is this. But when we're talking about the top tier, of long jumping, yeah. every, inch every inch is yeah. so much harder to okay. add on, right? So like, I agree with you, it's not a big gap in terms of like an absolute number, but the reality of closing that gap might actually be harder than the reality of closing one of these gaps. Yeah, so at the start of the day, I was gonna be, you were gonna like, I was gonna be a little ambitious. <laughs> like, yeah, but I gonna... mean, we gotta, we gotta go a little bit. <laughs> this, is, this is a bit of a struggle now. Oh no. I still feel like you LCS guys <laughs> are slipping. a little ah. too generous. Oh, come on. Oh no, come I on. think that's pretty good. Okay, so. That's like a four, and the LCS logo is upside down. It's your region. <laughs> that's kind of how it feels oh, right now. Oh God. Yeah, you gotta okay. do this jump backwards. So, but see, here's the thing, like that is a bigger gap yeah. But I still have more faith that the LCS can close this gap than like the LEC can close. It's a smaller. So you want to move gap. it and try and jump it? <laughs> I don't want to do any this. jumping. Yeah. I'm, you gonna, got this. I'm gonna hurt myself, man. Yeah, I mean, I have grippy <laughs> shoes Our on. Yeah, yelling, you're in your ear. I'm yeah, yeah. Just, you know? We already said we said off screen that if the regions were gonna do a long jumping competition, we would nominate you for the yeah. for the LCS. I mean, you got hops. I used to play a little basketball. There it is, and that's basically bit, right? the same. Yeah, yeah. So what am I doing? I'm trying to say. Can you reach the LEC? Yeah. Th so if 
You're the you're the boys, LCS EG winner. have to play a best of five against. It, it's not going to be easy. No. But <laughs> you have to do a standing long jump to see if it's possible. Right. Th so I can do this. You can close this gap. But yeah. my question is, when you get the whole, I'd have to take a running because I, 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 I need thing. to warm up. So it's so like there it is. Boom. That's not a problem. That easy. Good. You overshot it right? even. Boom. You're basically you just there we you go. just got to the LCK. Okay, Lyric, you but go. But the point is now you have to go from the actual starting point. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, for, leave, I'll leave that to you, Jat. Because again, the idea is we know that the, the if the LCS, the LCS, the LCS is that good though. Yeah. But the point is jump. you have to be that good plus some. You jump. It's not just about EG being did. here already. Oh no. And getting a set. That's two jumps. Now oh, we're not. Well, now we're looking at the triple jump. Totally different event. I'm gonna move this from us. <laughs> I'm gonna try and make this possible. This makes no sense to anyone but yeah. us, by the way. This I is just the wanna point that point. out. It doesn't make sense to me. I've <laughs> it's, it's, it's got no idea it's what's going gap. on. Like this is the gap between regions. We only have so five regions, like, we ran out of paper. It's so like it's still difficult for LEC to beat these regions, yes. but it's possible. It is possible. Right? And like, see, this is the way I see it. Like, can can I jump to the LCK? Like for you know LA what's sad the is that LPL. the gap between the LCS and the LCK is greater than the gap of the LCS and 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 not being a this human arbitrary or whatever line. that starting line is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I have actually extended my, my thoughts a little bit. What do you want me to try and jump? <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I just need. To I need you to prove point. that. I need you to prove that yeah. the LCS can go from arbitrary starting point to at least the LEC. Okay, and th the start. This is my mark. That's your mark. Uh, technically, the starting point is okay. this this okay. T this okay. T right here. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go, everybody. Jad either kills himself or he redeems the my whole of NA. My mic packs are in. Right here. Let's go for a big jump. Let's go. This is ridiculous. Oh. Boom! Hey! I need to go again. That was. Do we have? Do we close. have an official that word? That was close. <laughs> Did he make it? I actually feel pretty good about that jump. He made it. I got really? an official word. Did he make it? From the cameras. Now, technically, if we were doing it by long jump, they'd have to mark his back foot because it's the. It's the furthest mm -hmm. back. Yeah, I'm, we don't have stand. Touches. I'm not going to. Right. No, I don't want you to lay out. But, but I'm yelling too much. Oh, we have, a re we have a replay. We have a replay. Okay, I want to see. Yeah. Oh, I'm Ooh, short. Ooh, you're I'm a little short. short. His short. heel was a little I'm short. Little All right, we're going to give him one more shot, and then we're going out to the arena, because I think the that teams are just about bad. ready. Okay, so my mark that, is that's this. That's T. That's T. That's T. That's T. All right, here we go. For all of NA. I realize I'm a left foot jumper. There it is. I, think, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't that, know. I, I, I don't know. Here's what I think we should do. We should head out to the casters, and if they want to pull another replay, maybe they show it to the casters, and the casters can be the final judge. I don't think it's I, worth I, it. I think you were a little short. <laughs> I, I'm not sure it's worth it either. I think you were a little short. All right. I That's enough out of us. We're back over to Captain Flowers and Marcy to get the next game underway. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see that again. I'm good. You're, you're set. Passing on that. Yeah. Once, oh. once twice was too many. You could have gone zero. All right, Mark. Could have done. Could have not put you on the spot again. Oh God! For the next eight hours straight, you have to watch one of two things: either repeats of Jat's jump or the EG Fanatic game. Which one is it? Oh God, that's a tough one. I know. I'm, I'm subjecting you to some severe psychological endurance. Fanatic right versus versus EG. Yep. And then I'm gonna write them a big doc of everything. <laughs> you know, I'll use it as like pod review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a way I can make that productive. Okay. Let's not talk about that anymore, because we're in oh. Champ Select again, finally for Loud vs. Beyond Gaming. All right, let's rock and roll. Let's do this. Loud, they have fans who are very much for their namesake. This is one of the most popular teams on the internet. They exploded into the League of Legends scene just last year, 2021. Like, that's a really new team compared to some of these orgs that we've seen here time and time and time again. Uh, they're also champions in whatever the last Valorant thing was. <laughs> yeah, they, they just won the Valorant Championship. Now they're here at Worlds. Like you said, they're so young. You, we talk about watching Fnatic play. Fnatic is this storied org, most Worlds appearances ever. This is the complete opposite end of the spectrum for Loud, but that's what makes League so cool is that you can have this long, uh, you know, 11, 12 year history now and, and still have new orgs popping up. Uh, they are, like you heard them talking about, a combination of young talent and uh, older talent. Uh, Brant's a rookie popping off in that kind of playoff run, but then also yep. Robo and Tinones having a, some international appearances between them. Yeah, we've seen Robo and Tinones on these international stages before. These are guys who have been here with different squads. Across the aisle, though, Beyond Gaming, sixth place in their regular season, and they had to pull off three upsets in their playoffs just to get here. So this is a squad that I think is also going to be coming in with a lot to prove. Yeah, definitely the case. They were finding their footing, it felt like. Lee Kai got the uh, 2022 Summer Most Improved over 
uh, over there. So obviously for PCS, a big improvement for him that they could start counting on him in the top side a little bit more. Yep. Uh, I'm excited to see what he can pull off for them. I did like seeing his Gwen, for example, in, in the playoff run. I thought him on some of the carries was looking pretty good. Uh, played a lot of Fiora, played a lot of Gwen, which is, is a different angle than some people who are resorting to a lot of weak side, it feels like, in top lane right now. And hey, that Sejuani being locked in. Remember, this is a champion that has been banned out in the first ban phase in both of our previous games. So getting that one in there, Likai is a guy who can who will often prefer carries, but he can be flexible for a front-to-back tank type of role. And that's exciting when you have something like a Kai'Sa as well, if you can help stack up some of the plasma, dive in there together. Ooh, I'm baby. already seeing some synergy here. Meanwhile, it was a first pick Hecarim for Lau. Yeah, I'm liking this already. The Kai'Sa was something that a lot of people were speculating at coming back. They're saying this might be a great meta for certain AD carries, like Jackie Love, that they were saying, oh, oh can't wait to see the aggressive ones. That's locked in. All right, That's we're getting the blind, in. Jack. It's helicopter time. Technically, it's it's not blind. You're expecting the Sejuani to go top lane, but you can always flex that into the jungle for Husha. He played that a fair amount in their uh, their playoff run, so I, I don't think that there's any, um, you know, lack of familiarity with that champion. And then Minji can do this. Like I said, he plays carry champions. And so this is a little bit of a call out, I feel like, by Robo. If you've done your homework, you know uh, Lee Kai, excuse me, will, will be willing to play these, these skill matchups and you kind of drafted into it. Jax versus Fiora is such a fun skill-based matchup because it's all about when will Jax stop the helicopter? Will he get the stun or will she time it right with a repose? And it determines so much. Yeah, this is a, a great palette cleanser from the previous game. This one looks like a lot of aggressive champions. Obviously the Seraphine more focused on enabling these kind of melee carries, but uh, I kind of like the angle uh, that loud is going right now. Uh, for Beyond, one thing I'll say too is when I was looking at a lot of their drafts, they, they often have multiple forms of hard engage. Their, their team comps have a lot of CC, a lot of setup, uh, but then they also have this kind of like carry threat in the top side. So I, I often like a lot of their drafts, um, and both teams are kind of building towards some team fight with that kind of 4-1 setup. Yeah, and as we're getting into the second part of the bands here, you're seeing Galio, you're seeing Akali banned away, both sides kind of looking towards those mid lane pools. Remember that for Loud, this is a team that likes to be ahead early. So yes, you've got a Hecarim that can make some of those early ganks if he wants to be on the devastating charge, but I want to see these last couple of picks continue to have some early game presence and some playmaking to try to get these guys off to a good start against Beyond, who are not a very early game focused team. No, I think uh, their laning strengths not, or excuse me, laning is not their strength. They're not like 1v1ing people. In the finals, they were actually able to find a lot of kills. They got uh, up in kills uh, quite a bit against uh, the Flying Oysters, but then they were still even in goal because some some laning differentials. So it is something that I think uh, the team is more about their team play and coordination. Husha's really good about finding angles, especially around mid lane. Yeah. Um, we're going to see if they can make that kind of work. Now with the Amumu locked in as well, like I said, multiple forms of hard engage, a lot of CC. Yeah, lots of CC, lots of help trying to stack up that plasma there for Kaisa, having Wako be able to dive in with everybody else, what is the response across the table? We could see some more powerful engage here with the Nautilus. Like I already mentioned, they've got Hecarim, they've got Seraphine for the follow-up. It feels really good, especially if you can time it right to shoot her ulti out as Hecarim is galloping forward, but before he ults to get the extension on it, you can really set up some sick wombo combos and Nautilus is going to help him. Yeah, Nautilus Seraphine is a surprisingly a strong shoving lane as well. It doesn't necessarily insta-lose the way you sometimes expect to see like tank plus uh, Seraphine sometimes struggle in lane. It, it yeah. can get the shove and uh, win some trades. It'll also make life very difficult for Wacko on the uh, Kaisa there. Whenever he goes flying in, you'll have depth charges coming your way. You have the Seraphine charms as well. There's just a lot of uh, melee engage options to make it very difficult to choose your moment to go in. All right, we got some Azir, the final pick of the draft for Loud. What do their opponents want to counter with? Does Minji throw down the gauntlet and say, all right, I'm going to blow you up before you get the chance to scale? I would love to see the LeBlanc picked here. Uh, Minji has has some incredible playmaking. I, I really liked watching his games. He, he finds good angles, and I'd say Tin owns as well his Maybe the most important member, Brant's had an incredible playoff run as that meta shifted to being more about 80 carries, and he was able to step up as that focus became onto the bot lane situation. But I think Tinones is is the true main carry of this team. You have to remember back 2014. I'm sorry, Europe. I hope you're in bed, but I got to bring it up. Kaboom! The one that oh, blew no. Alliance out of Worlds 2014. None other than Tinones in his last Worlds appearance way back then. You talk about the history of the esport. Yeah, it's a new organization, but Tinones is a guy who's been forged in the fires. He's been in international competitions before. So one of the things I'm looking at now that draft is all done, again, going back to Beyond Gaming not being strong laners, not looking to make a whole lot of things happen early. They do not have high stats in terms of kills or damage per minute. They do not have early game objective control. When you look
look at Waka, when you look at Minji, these guys are not exceptional laners, but it's those late game opportunities that they can find to work as a team that get some wins. They are undefeated when they secure Baron. Definitely they are more focused on team play. I think that you can see a lot of attention probably going to the top side of the map. I can see already Kino roaming around, meeting up with Husha, trying to get one of their two solo lanes going. This is a very aggressive team comp. Should be an explosive game for the side of Beyond Gaming. Can they push enough of a lead in these lane phase? Can they get these kills? Or can Loud weather the storm, come through the other side, and have this insane team fight? And on my little prep paper here, almost right across the aisle from each other, I have Beyond Gaming, low kill and damage stats, and across them for Loud, high kill and death counts, very bloody. <laughs> so if I'm Loud, I'm trying to force this. PvP at level three, get some dives, get some plays, be ready to fight, and get in their face. Take advantage of the fact that this is not a team that plays for those early leads and punish them. Yeah, we'll have to see if they can make that happen. I think they can play one of two ways. Like you said, they can play that really aggressive angle. You also have, you know, very strong level sixes with uh, Croc, Brantz, uh, Tinones, obviously, Seos as well. You can all make some big team fights happen. And here we go, man. I'm excited to see this one. You heard already so many people pandering to the loud fan base on the analyst desk. All of oh, them yeah. are... Ja oh, it was Jack the one likes. trying to piss him off, and it was uh, farming the followers. Lyric was trying to make them, uh, you know, everyone's saying, I, I might mispronounce it, but Fazoel or whatever, to just say, you know, the L for loud. I don't know if you saw that. That's like the, the whole Twitter thing was about that. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, it was uh, Mateus made Portillo, some yeah. kind of a tweet, and then there were 480 responses in 30 minutes, and they were all the same meme. So the Brazilian fans definitely move as a unit. They strike as one, and now we need to see if their team can do the same thing. Another big contrast between these two teams and the way they approach League of Legends fundamentally, when you look at the junglers, when you look at the side of Loud, and you look at what they're going to do early on, they want to make plays with Croc. He wants to play towards those solo lanes, particularly prioritize affecting the lanes over going for just the farm, whereas for Husha, he's much more of a pathing guy. Min-max those, maybe not go for as many ganks, but make sure you've always got those timers ticking. Yeah, and I really like what they did uh, level one, where Minji hopped the wall with LeBlanc, put a ward down to see the start of Croc and the rest of Loud to give Husha, like you said, that kind of information to know where he can potentially be going. Both junglers starting on the bot side of the map, gonna have just knowledge that, hey, Hecarim will be meeting me in these solo lanes. Right. To be expected, like we said, this bot lane, yeah, it can get explosive if someone gets hit by a hook and really misplays, but realistically, for Beyond Gaming, they're the ones who I feel like should be pushing the pace of the game early on, whether that be working with your melee in the top side with Fiora to build up some stacks, get a gank onto uh, Robo with the Fiora. Mm, nice little engage there from Seos going after Kino. Oh, Kino ready to strike back. Seos at about 250 HP. Both supports taking a couple of hits down here, but it was Ignite spent by Beyond. No summoner spells here for Loud, so I'm going to give the edge to them. Yeah, like I was saying, uh, Seraphine and Nautilus surprisingly strong 2v2 in the early lane phase. Able to get that Ignite out, walk away just fine. Uh, going to survive that early on. Like we said, though, mostly focused on farming. Going to be okay. Here is where my eyes are going to be on who can get up there and influence this lane. Oh, Husha yeah. coming in already. Husha making his way up top as Robo wants to crash the wave. Croc is around. He's going after his own blue buff. He shoots off the Scryer's Bloom. This should let Beyond know that he is down there in his own jungle at his own blue buff. Husha's coming top. Robo immediately deploys the Counter-Strike. W2 from Husha does hit. Do we have the rest of the CC available? Not quite. Robo is able to walk it off. Oh, Robo gets out of there. Husha not able to get the E, I guess, not in range, potentially, after Likai finished stacking that one up. Able to just walk out of there. Doesn't even lose his flash as we see more fighting in the bot lane. I'm so wrong about this lane. We are getting spicy, Mark, and it's first blood over to Seraphine. One immediately coming back for the Kaisa. Both bottom lane carries are on the board. Not able to get the second kill there. Wacko, though, happy to pick that one up. Uh, will be very important, I feel like, for him to become kind of the late game DPS threat on the backside. Uh, Brance, though, very happy to pick that one up himself. Now, I was watching Brance's stream a bunch heading into this game with the Champions queue popping off. There was that legendary speaker game that we were talking about where he got a 30 bomb in it, but it was Brance's POV everyone was watching. He was getting in there and already kind of popping off a little bit this game. I think this is a, a pretty even trade overall, but I do like seeing the aggressiveness. If that hook lands, it's going to be a much easier trade for them able to actually yeah. finish him off quickly. Uh, Sales there, just not able to get out. Yep. 
tried to get away from it, went for the flash exit, but Wacko had the aim there with the plasma. So, hey, a one-for-one -one trade ain't too bad. 7,000 to 6,800, so a very slight gold lead here early on for Loud. Part of that, of course, is going to be farmed back up here. You can see a much larger wave for Robo to farm compared to Lakai. And right there, that's so much of what this matchup comes down to is whether or not Jax can get the stun on Fiora. You can see, even though he got it, though, he loses that trade. Yeah, it's still uh, pretty difficult pre-level 6 before you start getting your ult. Uh, just getting those third attacks in there. Fiora, uh, Fiora often wins some of those trades. Though, you see the wave coming in, Croc protecting him. Croc, Mr. Worldwide himself, has played in a number of <laughs> regions. Uh, he's very familiar with multiple different play styles because of that. I feel like he's been exposed to different regions, tendencies, and whatnot. So uh, he's been kind of the first time he won a, a domestic title in CB LOL this time around, but has been someone who has consistently been performing across the world. And you know, talking about the CB LOL, it's pretty impressive when you look at Loud as an organization, because they joined the League of Legends scene in 2021, they have made playoffs each split except for spring of this year. So the first half of this year was kind of their, that was their trough, that was their trench, and now they've bounced back in summer and they're here on the world stage. Yeah, I think mean, Brant, you know, coming in as a rookie in spring split, being able to live up to the expectations, help them win that title, finishing fourth in the reg regular season, having a pretty strong playoff run is a very promising for this organization, knowing that, you know, this kid's still leveling up and already getting world experience. You saw that graphic, yeah. him versus Wacko is, is night and day with uh, compared to some of the people who's gonna be leaning up against. Yeah, just the fact that he's 18. Like that's, that's 14 years ago for me. All right, that's, I feel really old. Let's not go there. Look at this trade in the top side. <laughs> Robo, he's in some trouble, man. Fiora just whooping on him early. Likai really doing a good job here in this 1v1. Of course, Robo would love to be able to stick around, farm up some minions, but it ain't gonna happen. The wave is pushing back towards Likai. Yeah, Likai already getting a pretty good lead in the top side of the matchup. It's surprising to me that they took the Jax for Robo. He, especially in playoffs, felt like was resorting to a lot more weak side champions. A lot of uh, Nar, Sejuani, does play some carries like Olaf and whatnot. He, he can play the Rumble, these kinds of things, but uh, generally the team's play style did not seem centered around him, especially given how the meta evolved to be bot lane focused. And to take that Jax, I wonder if they really just maybe didn't do the homework to think that the Sejuani must be going top lane, or they just said, we don't care, we think we can just play into Likai and we're not that worried about him. Well, Robo also has the highest kill participation of any top laner in play-ins. This is not a guy who's normally just going to sit in the side lane, push, 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 in the game one, one, and zero or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's gonna look to get involved. He's gonna look to potentially play some of those bigger fights. So I'm interested to see how that goes for him. That call, he's still stacking that up a little bit. It's gonna make his laning a little bit weaker, especially compared to something like the Sheen on Likai for these quick trades. Yeah, definitely uh, uh, ramping up for the Jax, but I do like his activity. It's one of the things Robo's really good at when you talk about that kill participation. It's not just champion pool, but it's mindset about the game too. He does get out of lane fairly often, try and make things happen. Ooh, I was wondering if Croc was gonna go there when Minji took that W forward. It's just so hard on the Blanc, right? Because she's just gonna W back. Yeah. Especially for Hecarim, who needs to hit you at the right angle to knock you forward. LeBlanc just sort of never lets you. Plus, when you're not sick, you don't have the kind of fear to make sure that you keep running in that direction. Uh, but the fact that we haven't been talking about mid lane thus far, is pretty good for Loud. I think, uh, you know, the LeBlanc side of the matchup does feel the pressure to be making things happen. Oh, yeah. I mean, Tinone's quietly having, what, a two-wave lead? Feels really good. The Azir here nice and early. LeBlanc not being able to get a whole lot done. That chain just flies out into Timbuktu, so not a lot of whole, uh, <laughs> not a whole lot of plays. Almost hit me. <laughs> getting, getting going here in the mid lane as Ten Owens will just continue farming up, shoving out. The power of that Azir cannot be understated as we move forward. You can see Seos hanging out here mid, going for the dredge line as Minji jumps in, but he's able to get back in time. Yeah, just a little flyby there, seeing if he could get a cheeky hook off. Maybe not even kill, but get some flashes of force, given that Seraphine was on the reset. Here we go, round two. Gank topside gets the jump in. There's the leap strike. That's what they were looking for. Jax's inbuilt escape mechanism no longer ready to go. They stun him up with the E. They're going to get the chain CC. Easy money for Beyond. Yeah, you could see Croc showing up just a little bit too late, deciding it's not worth going in there. Would probably be holding another kill over. But here's the rest of Loud. And there's the rest of the play. <laughs> Not in time to My get a bad. whole lot done. My bad. False alarm, everybody. All right. Not going to actually have a play, but the Brant does commit the teleport up to the top side, so it looks like they are eager to start off this Rift Herald, given that Seos was up in that area anyways after that little mid flyby. 
All righty, Rift Herald is always nice to get here early on, especially if you secure him before 10 minutes. It means the eye, as long as you drop it in a spot that's not out in the middle of the woods somewhere, is going to get you that plate value, if nothing else. But it looks like Beyond can now have at least for themselves. It's dangerously close to running out of patience, though, so they got to be careful here. Yeah, we'll see if Loud want to contest. Wacko did make his way up. I thought he was going to just stay hitting turret plates, but they're actually going to fight. Oh, Seos. Here on the front line. Does Kino want to go for anything? The Amumu ulti gets dropped. They find two. Seo's still nice and healthy. Kino's very low. Croc goes in looking for Husha, but now Beyond could be in a really bad spot. Lakai tries to get away over the wall as they continue to look for kills. Minji loses his clone, but that is it. No deaths either side. What? But Loud has way more health bar. How did no one die there? I thought for sure someone was going to drop, but nothing ends up coming through. Brantz hit a nice two-man ultimate, though, to buy the control to get the Rift Herald. So Loud coming out ahead on the tail end of that fight. Did not find any of the kills, but I think the young AD carry for them coming up big at the first Rift Herald fight. Let's take another look at how it went down. Yeah, so Minji's just trying to get some early poke off onto Sales. That hook missing puts him in a bit of a weird spot here. Kino then gets followed up. He's getting targeted down. I like the ult flash out. Things looking okay here, given you see that Croc has to ult out, not really use it on anyone, but there's that double stun landing on both solo laners of Beyond. Likai and Minji both kind of running forward. They're able to get out because, hey, very mobile champions, but like you said, Loud coming away with that Rift Herald now. Loud with the Rift Herald. We'll have to wait and see where they want to drop that one. One option, one opportunity, of course, is just about a minute's time from now. The Drake is going to be spawning. You can always use it as a distraction for that. Yeah, no Drake priority, really. I mean, Beyond did grab one, but it's uh, not been the focus of the game so far. It's a really interesting position, I think, for Loud here, what they want to do with this Rift Herald, because Robo's falling behind now up to about a 30 CS deficit. There's a big wave crashing. He'll catch up a little bit, but normally in these matchups, it's like, let's accelerate the jacks. Let's get him stronger, but they don't really have Pryo in that lane and probably yeah. won't for the rest of the game, uh, unless, you know, they start winning team fights and then he gets the gold. So you're wondering, do we give it to the Azir? Do we give it to the bot lane to just try and break this turret? There's not an obvious, like, oh, this will give them an insane power spike. It's just going to be an influx of gold, most likely for the Azir around a Fight, like you said. And the scary part about these carry versus carry top lane matchups is when you fall behind 30 CS, when you're just stuck underneath your tower, you feel really, really useless. It's not like you're an Orn or something that can always just sound the horn and have a massive team fight in that. Yeah, uh, top lane's a bit of a wasteland. <laughs> in general, where the most unfun matchups occur, sometimes it's melee into range, sometimes it's these kinds of skill matchups like you're talking about, where once you fall behind, there's nothing you can really do except hug your turret, try and farm up, and uh, not cost your team the game through these kind of 1v1s. Beyond are trying to stop this Herald from charging in, but it ain't gonna happen. Two plates guaranteed. They Ooh. won't be getting any more. Kino engages. They look for Tanones, and they've already got him. Minji gets himself away, goes right back into the fight now. However, they're still looking for another kill. It's Seos who drops, and Husha picks it up. Beyond get two. Beyond find two kills in the mid lane. This is exactly what we're talking about. Their strengths being as a team, working as a unit, multiple forms of hard engage. Kino can go in first. They drop all their damage onto Tinos, but then they still have enough follow up to find Sales on the back end of it, which will also get the second dragon in their back pocket, exploding their gold lead. And I talked about Husha being a good jungler in terms of his pathing, knowing when he wants to deviate from fu from fully clearing, knowing when he wants to make these plays. This guy has been setting up some good stuff here for the team so far. And what Kino. a snipe. Just getting him before he can get the dash out to safety, the chain CC combo blowing him up. Wacko able to follow up with that uh, Kaisa ultimate. And then here, just a nice, easy chase down sequence. So much <laughs> you can see CC available. It's very hard to get out once you're in there, especially for a Nautilus of all champions. So feeling very good now for Beyond Gaming. Yep, both of their big CC engagers are at three out of four kill participation. The Kaisa for Wacko also at three out of four, completing that Kraken Slayer now. That is the first mythic item completed in the entire game. Feels really good for Beyond. Yeah, he's gotten a nice acceleration. Lao do, I don't, I think I would say they have the scaling advantage given Seraphine and uh, Azir and, and Hecarim and how they all are gonna combo together in 5v5s, but uh, you still have to be very concerned about how you end up taking those 5v5s, because eventually, if Beyond get far enough ahead, they're controlling. As you see right now, two wards already in the enemy jungle, sealing away red buffs. It's a tough team to face check into with yeah. the amount of CC they have, the LeBlanc burst coming in and just instantly blowing people up. Uh, we'll see it right here, potentially. Yep, we're talking about some burst. Tanones tries to get rid of him, stays alive, but it costs him that ulti. I like the fact that they went for it. Unfortunately, they just didn't have any damage close enough nearby. So Juani and Amumu were a great setup, but somebody else has to get the ball in the basket. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not the most threatening combination there. Get the ult out of Tinones, like you said, though, and control the bot say it's still. None of those wards were cleared out. So for Beyond, they can just kind of shove these waves in, put a lot of pressure down onto Brants and Seos, making them have to respect this fog of war. 
and eventually they'll start getting some more turret plates as they actually fall off right now. Excuse me. Yep, plates are just about to drop. There they go. Robo gets away from the top side. He's still down a little bit of farm compared to his opponent. Of course, once that coal cashes in, he'll be feeling slightly better about it. Divine Sunderer already completed here for Lakai, so he's on a much better power spike. Yep, much stronger right now. But I would say for Robo, not doing too bad when it was around that 30 CS lead. He was catching that wave. Has seemingly stabilized around 20 since then and has been able to go mostly toe to toe. We'll see. Well, the guy's running after him now. Ooh. Lunge. We go for another one. Okay. Finds another. Whoops, Robo cast. knows you can't go anywhere now. <laughs> Caster curse that one. My bad, Robo. Unlucky. Uh, sorry, loud fans. That was a uh, tough trade there. Lee Kai getting a lot of damage done. Control up in the top side. Doesn't seem like uh, he wants to hard shove this wave quite yet. Getting some vision control down. Uh, they have a lot of vision in that boss side, but they don't see anyone, so I think he knows that people are starting to make their clear up to the top side. I uh, also want to point out for Croc, he's got the Chempunk Chainsword first item. For the Hecarim game that we saw just previously with Mad Lions, one thing that I want to talk about is the fact that when I went on socials, a lot of people were very critical of the very <laughs> the tanky build. Yeah. I saw Dom talking about it, throwing some flame towards that build, because you need to have plenty of damage on this champion to be that backline dive threat and Kempunk Chainsword is 116% gold efficient without the Grievous wounds being applied to it. That means this 2800 gold item essentially is worth about 3200 gold worth of stats. It's like an extra kill for free. It's one of the most built holes we see a potential dive here. We'll follow up on this in a second potentially. All right. Loud's really trying to force this one here, bringing a lot of bodies up top, crashing another wave in, but Beyond is ready to respond with the same amount of men. However, the big difference here, Wacko still in the bottom lane, pushing towards the tier two. Meanwhile, Brantz has made his way up towards the top side river yet again, so it's going to be Loud going for the Herald. Yeah, Beyond, I can respect this a little bit, knowing that you can just get some gold directly into your carries right now. Wacko working down on that bot lane turret. They committed the five men up to the top side. You say, okay, fair enough. You now have no TPs available for the side of Loud, and you are going to have two for beyond so in the next couple minutes here after you know the dragon fight that will probably happen in one minute yep. uh, you will have this kind of one three one opportunity to make side lane plays with your teleport advantage for the side of beyond to actually play to your comp strengths it's not really the 5v5 you want it's about trying to find these pickoffs in side lanes and i mean when you think about second herald one of the most valuable things you can get with a second herald is a tier two side lane turret because they're worth so much money well, Mark, Wacko just got a tier two side lane turret and it's worth so much money. So I'd call that a pretty good trade. Yeah, and the fact that Loud doesn't have any of the outers down quite yet too in Beyond Gaming's pocket, kind of blowing that gold lead up to a 2001. We'll have to see. It does feel like for Loud, it's about these kind of big team fights. I think they wanted Beyond to contest them at that second Herald and Beyond was very, you know, heads up saying, nope, we're not going to do that. But here they are grouping up now for this dragon, spawning in 20 seconds. They still don't have the mythic completed onto Minji quite yet. I wonder if he's going to try and get some uh, gold, get the recall and get TP back in, or if they're just going to sack this objective. They theoretically can. There's no need. They need to fight this uh, dragon, given that they already have two themselves. All righty, Loud. Let's see how it's going down. The Herald summoned up. It will take this turret for free, guaranteed. There comes the charge. Kaboom. Goodbye. Good night. Now, it's that Drake spawning here in a second. Loud is really trying to force this Herald up just a little bit further. Get the second charge. TP flank by Minji, he's sitting in the brush. I don't think that they saw him there, but the Azir turret giving them some protection from the backside. Yup, this is the important part about Azir. He can make these little forward operating bases, allow the rest allowed to play around it so they cannot fall victim to the pincer attack. And now they move back as a five-man squad. Minji has to give up that pincer position because he just cannot afford to be found by the five stack. Absolutely love that play from Loud. The fact that they're able to grab a turret, get up his five, get both TPs out, and now be grouped up for this dragon fight that we see the Hex Gate's coming uh, in. Uh, okay, Lakai went all the way to the other side of the river, and now they're going to go in. Loud looking for a chance, but they missed the Seraphine ulti, and Beyond's ready to go. There comes a big Azir ulti, shoveling multiple targets, but Lakai's getting the heal, barely staying alive. Dashes back over the wall, and Robo takes him down. But now you got to keep going. Wait, go! To He's gone. Beyond will crush them all, and Beyond. Beyond has aced Loud here in about one, two, three, four, five, six. They eight. aced him! There we go! Beyond game and popping off. It looked like such a close fight there, but I think you called it out. The critical big AoE heal coming in from the Kai. He goes down, but he provides his team all this protection to continue DPSing through that fight after Tinones had a monster ultimate. 
This looked really int at first. <laughs> yeah, this looked funny. Flying over the team as the rest of Loud collapses on your Amumu here. And this kind of 5v5 group up is exactly what they want to do for Seraphine. But that ultimate miss there by Brant absolutely cost them this fight. If he had it here after they've committed, or you just hold it for more zone control, they can't really jump on top of you. But once that's down, Likai lives for so long, makes Robo flash the wall to try and finish him off. And during that time, Wacko's untouched the entire time, just ripping through them on this extremely farmed and fed Kaisa, where they were just funneling him gold over and over again. He's able to carry this fight. So Beyond already had a lead, Mark. How crushing is this for Loud to get ace there? Because I feel like now Beyond is loving the current game state. They're feeling really good. One, you just got a, to a huge influx of gold. You're going to be able to complete a bunch of items. Two, you're now on soul point. That feels great. You're also able to have a lot of side lane control, which your team comp obviously wants to do. Divide and conquer. The fact that you just won a team fight feels great. I won't say it's doomed, though. When we were talking about the Fnatic EG game and you were like, how do they come back? And I was like, they don't. Yep. <laughs> I will say Loud does have an opportunity to start playing these 5v5s better. You saw the one at Rift Herald when Brands hit that two-man charm, how that could just win the fight right away. There, I think if he has it up, they can still win this. The goal lead isn't totally doomed quite yet. It's still only about 3,000, despite a lot of the other advantages that they have. They did get a big influx of gold from those turrets right beforehand, which I think has helped make that not as bad of a team fight. So they can still win from here, but they really need to win this next dragon fight. All righty, all eyes will be on loud to stop that soul. Hextech soul. Really, really scary even compared to the other ones. It's a bit of a nightmare to have to deal with. The power of the AoE, the power of the slow as well. Loud, I'm just looking at them to see if they can find the engage they want. They've got the Hecarim, the Seraphine, the Nautilus. Lock down one of these value targets. Ninji goes in, gets stunned up, loses half HP. Robo stays on him. Nobody else on the side of Loud is under the same amount of pressure. Ooh. Ninji barely getting away, and Robo dies. Now, Hoosh is tanking up. They get the stun on a croc as he barely gets himself out. Another stun coming out from Sejuani. Seos under pressure. It's one nothing for Beyond. Yeah, Robo getting split from his team there. Initially, it looked like Minji got chunked out, so you can understand the mindset of wanting to punish him when he gets slow, but just no one else there to help out. Gives one kill back over for Robo. All righty, all righty, all righty. 3,000 gold lead, three Drake lead. Beyond looking good. Let's take another look at how this fight went down, because it was a little sketchy here at the start. Yeah, you're getting the kind of 5v5 mid. Uh, trying to get some priority, especially for Beyond wanting to drop that outer turret. And there you see Minji when he went in, got chunked out, but then able to land multiple roots, multiple CC. Wacko able to join in the backside. Here we go. Loud. Doing a Baron. All right. Loud's going to look for Minji here. Usha just jumps right on back in. Croc is uh, not feeling so great about this one. It's stunned up. Lakai coming in. Seeing if there's anything else to be found here. Sejuani stunned. Finds Seos. The Nautilus is down. Minji goes on a killing spree. And Loud, I don't know what that was, but it wasn't the right call. Loud feeling like they're getting a little bit desperate here to get some plays going their way. Over sitting for Minji in the previous fight. Then again here, trying to make a play happen in the top side and beyond. Having the tools to punish them now. Croc is low. He's going to try healing up off this jungle camp before collapsing onto this Baron. All right, Loud, you got to stop him here. This is a massive advantage if Beyond are able to grab it. Kino's coming around on the flank. The Amumu looking for the angle. Husha goes for the engage. Oh. Robo just dead instantly. Tanone's now the next target. A nice repost on the shuffle. As Kino? Tanone's continues trying to get away, Kino can still cut him off. Flash, bandage toss over the wall. Triple kill to Minji. A massacre for Beyond. 6-0-6 six, six on this LeBlanc. He's absolutely popping off. And with that play, that he'll secure his team. The Baron buff. Beyond have grabbed control of this game and not let go. Dominating loud so far. Seos is back alive. Oh, no, Croc. Oh, no. Minji goes godlike. Enemy jungler is down. The chance of losing the Baron is now completely gone. Lucia with no smite. And it could have been a potential worry, but not any longer. Seos even having to flash away to avoid another death. Yeah, with that Baron going down beyond, now we'll have complete control over this game. We talk about the 1-3-1 one, one that they have available. It's incredible. Uh, Baron is incredible on teams like this because you can use all three lanes buffed up at the same time, potentially. Not a ton of teleports for Beyond, so maybe they don't want to split the map up too much. But here you see just a really over-eager jump onto Minji. Again, yeah. they feel like they want to lock this LeBlanc down, but it's so difficult. And Croc is put to pretty much dead before the rest of Beyond even show up. Husha does a really good job landing the W through multiple members of Loud and making sure to get the stun onto Croc, making sure that this chase down sequence can actually come through here for the rest of Beyond to find these kills. And Minji, the one they initially tried to jump on, gets the triple kill. Honestly, Minji just, I, I don't know what Croc is doing, man, going for the LeBlanc like that. But then here's the re-engage. Robo just, oop, see ya. 
Yep, that's Jax in team fights when you're far behind. I mean, he does have the uh, frozen heart done, but it's not going to provide too much savior for you when you have. Whoa! Oh boy! Nothing to see there. Yep, no big <laughs> deal. Just the enemy mid laner being forced back to base with no teleport as the Drake soul spawns and is secured by Beyond Gaming. All right, just in case there's any chance for this game, feels pretty dead now for Beyond Gaming. Grabbing soul point, they have decent options to proc it. LeBlanc can always go in and just queue someone. You can yep. also have the Ws from Kaisa hit from far away. And you can see with that chunk, it's so hard to try and defend these turrets. This one's dropping right now. You still have the top outer up as well, but we'll see how much Beyond want to focus that or if they just want to keep going down mid. All right, Mark, earlier on in this game, you were talking to me about how there's still hope. It's not doomed. Where's the doomsday clock at right about now for Loud? Uh, it's, it's hitting midnight. I think I hear it stroked right now. It's uh, going off about how there's very little chance for Loud to come back in. Uh, if you mess up a dive and you get a big Seraphine charm into a big scoop or something like that, that's probably the only angle Loud have because now Beyond can just group up his five and brute force down these turrets. Yeah, Jax is doing the solo queue split push while you're losing your inhibitor. He just tries to get something back. He'll go after the tier two there, maybe at least be able to claim one of those objective bounties, but they know they can't do anything about the mid lane inhibitor dying anyway. They have to give that up, but Robo's got no mana. He doesn't have the ability to just zerg down this turret. So sorry, Beyond's not gonna let him have anything. Yeah, I, I like the, the call ultimately from Loud there. You know, you're like, all right, well, we're not going to stop them from diving us with the Sejuani and Amumu anyway, so just split Robo out, try and get some more gold onto him because honestly, you're just trying to weather the storm and not lose the game during this Baron. This will force Beyond most likely to win one more major team fight, whether that be around Baron or Elder uh, Soul Point, so, or excuse me, Elder. So that is probably the angle for Loud, trying to get one more of these big wombo combo team fights where you okay. can somehow blow them up. Uh, there's not a ton of defensive options built for, like, Minji, for example. Sometimes you see people go, oh, I'll get Banshee's Veil or something, just make sure I don't throw my lead. He's saying, nah, I'm building the book. All right, I've got the I've got the five-head play. The All right. book is the defensive option because it's daring them to keep trying to kill him, which has just sucked as a decision this <laughs> game for Loud. Every time Croc goes in looking for Minji, bad things happen for Loud. So he's building the book that taunts you. It dares you to come towards him and look. Yeah, guys, come get these pages off me. No, I don't think he's going to be giving these up. Minji has looked incredible so far, showing that they are to be feared in this group. A lot of people were talking about Group A. Oh. They knew he was there. Tanones walked up to try to stab him with a soldier and lost three quarters HP. Yeah, feels pretty bad. Like I was saying, Beyond is slept on a little bit in this group. It felt like people saying two horse race, Fnatic and EG, who's gonna get first? Some people were putting respect on Beyond's name, but I don't think much in the broader Western conversation, the English speaking conversation that I had seen. It seemed like they were talking about them second or third. Maybe they can, they can upset and get there, but this has been an incredible game so far. Absolutely kind of, dominating loud and so far. it ain't stopping. They it's just not go done. in, instantly kill that Hecarim. This is what I'm talking about. When you're a drain tank, burst is your mortal enemy. Yeah, they just go over him. You could see Loud was not prepared for that amount of damage to come out. I was not prepared for it. I was trying to do my monologuing. I was trying to do that. They're off like, no, we got to get more kills. All right, Robo gets the stun onto Lakai there. Doing all right with it. They immediately respond by bringing more players down from Beyond, but Loud has their guys reinforcing as well, so nothing more going to happen here in the bottom lane. Beyond backs away. Mark, we've got about 90 seconds until Baron spawns. I would expect Beyond to head back to base, shop up, get the control wards, make any purchases, and set up around that top side river. Yeah, it's so hard for Loud to even get out of their base right now. You can see the pressure that Lakai is putting out. Trades the ultimates, but even after this, he'll probably just run back down bot lane, keep pressure up so that if Loud decides to contest the Baron, he will potentially be getting an inhibitor. Maybe he's going to get a TP flank. We'll have to see because they will have all the pressure in this game. No wards on the map really at all for Loud. The only ones they do have are in the Dragon Pit, which is the wrong side of the map right now. Yep, unfortunately, that is not the place to be. Oh, no. Beyond setting the trap. And they have Minji in the rush this time with Kino. And owns all. Oh, he's already gone, isn't he? It's chicken Wacko. And Hoosh is eating good. Prance dies next. Goodbye to Seos. Do they even need the Baron Mark? I think they're just going to walk it down. No, the game is over with that. They got super creeps to escort in. They find that pickoff, and then Wacko taking the ultimate into the middle of four people, knowing that there's no way they're going to be able to finish him off. Three players, including one of the two meatballs, have not died on Beyond Gaming. Croc's going to try to stand and fight. Robo's already dead. There it is. There's the ace. 21 to 3. Not even 30 minutes into the game. Beyond will smash loud.
absolute domination out of the PCS number two seed. People were wondering where is this region strength at? And so far they're looking very good. Going to be making North America sweat a little bit after watching that previous game as well. That was nice from beyond. I love the fact that they were ready to answer what Loud threw down. Loud first picks the Jacks. Okay, cool. Well, not entirely first pick, but yeah. they, they pick it in response to a Sejuani. They say, all right, Sejuani's going in the jungle. Fiora's going to go up there and deal with you. We'll take the skill matchup. You're going to pick Azir. Cool. Whatever. It's LeBlanc time. It popped off. It worked beautifully. Loud had a couple of good moments early, but unfortunately, once the game got away from them, they had no way back in. Yeah, definitely the case where it looked like they had the opportunity in some of these team fights. I think you're going to go back and look at that dragon one where they ended up getting kind of wiped, and you just say, if we hold the charm and land it, maybe we're able to win that team fight, then we stop this dragon stacking, we can start looking a little bit better. Uh, this did feel like a game that had a pretty massive breaking point right there. Yeah, that's always what I try to look at when I go back in a VOD of any kind of game, right? Whether it's your own solo queue game, whether it's a professional game, whatever, Ever, you always find the moment that really had the greatest impact, and it was that blue buff fight where everything went awry. It looked so good at the start, too, with Fiora going on a magical journey to the other side yeah. of the river. <laughs> it did look like it was a decent start. I do feel bad for Brance being the young kid on the roster, his rookie yep. split, having that bit of an oopsie there. But hopefully, uh, you know, the team and the fans rally around him. Don't let it affect his mental state, and he can kind of bounce back, because it is very early on in group stage still. Right, very early on in group stage. If you get first, you get the free out. But if you get second, third, or fourth, you're still kind of in the same ballpark as any of those other positions. Just don't get last or right next to it, right? So anyway, if you are looking for more Worlds-related coverage and cannot get enough of Emily Rand and Travis Gafford, you can check out the Rift Reactions podcast on Spotify. While you do, we're heading back over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. I can never get enough Emily Rand and Travis Gafford. Make sure you tune into their podcast on Spotify. Thank you very much, Captain Flowers. Loud taking the L against Beyond Gaming. Let's talk about how it happened here. Um, I want to start in the draft lyric because right near the end of our segment, we had kind of hypothesized about how the top lane matchup might break down champion, uh, champion wise. We had said Fiora, Camille, we got, we got close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know talking to some of the Eastern teams that they're very big on the carry top laners. Like mm -hmm. they love those buffs coming through. And again, on loud side, Robo is someone who's always going to have the confidence to opt into that matchup. Casters are talking about it a little bit right can be a little bit back and forth depending on how the Jax uses the stun. And, you know, sadly for Loud, despite the fact that I think all of us like their composition, you know, a little bit more, yeah. weren't able to pull through. Yeah, I think conventionally, if you're thinking how are the 5v5s going to play out, almost everyone would take the team comp on the left. But yeah. the team comp on the right is definitely pretty skill checky. So if LeBlanc gets ahead, if Fiora is able to pop off, Kai's is going to be able to assassinate people in the back with the help of Sejuani CC. That's what they were able to accomplish. Like, I... I think you take two neutral teams, almost everyone's taking the comp on the left, but it is about the execution. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All things equal, definitely going to the team on the left, but uh, but to your point, things weren't equal. And, and, no. and you know, that's why we play the game. <laughs> we don't just end after draft and go, yeah, they have the better comp. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting to me about this is it keys into a conversation we were having earlier about, like, if whether or not teams who think they are better than their opponents will draft for that more slow, scaly, team fight style composition. So I wonder if Loud felt that they were, you know, the far better team here. And that's why they went the direction they did because backstage, we were also talking about how Loud traditionally can be a little bit faster paced. It, it is hard speculation to do. I would say, especially on day ones of play-ins, this is just a read where there were too many champions. They thought they couldn't leave and not pick. Gotcha. Seraphine could be looked at as very OP. Seraphine Hecram especially is another great pairing. Make that a good team fighting comp by throwing in the Azir. Like, I, I can definitely see where they just think this is, you know, the Omega comp. Yeah, and I also think it could also just come down to, like, the metas of who, you, who you've been scrimming and, and the regional access, right? The fact that beyond coming from the PCS, having access to scrim teams, like BCS and like mm -hmm. LPL, I, regions that are much more willing to go towards these more skill check oriented comps and again, may not even Love this flank. Like, see them as bad. Yeah. And, and like you said, they have the opportunity to to show their skills. Great flank and honestly, even Waco on this team fight playing very Ooh. well. Right there. Waiting for access after the little Blanc gets in there. The Fiora healing saved this fight to me. Cause you think Seraphine, 
balled up people, we're gonna win. Ooh. But then randomly, the Fiora ult provides the healing needed for the end of that fight. Look at that LeBlanc damage though too. I mean, yeah, you called it out a lot. I mean, we had a triple kill up in the top yeah. lane as well that really started to kind of turn things. But also, that's probably the prettiest gold graph of the day. Yeah. Um, uh, a lot of our games, once a team secured a sizable lead, they were able to close it out. But that is one of those gold graphs we like in terms of the steady incline as you keep you know, pulling gold into your favor again for this team. So, I mean, beyond gaming, going to feel really good to get that first win, start things out on the right foot. Again, we talk about only needing to get to top four in order to have at least best of fives in order to get, you know, to the group stage. And that, that, that there you go. That's one of your, you know, one of your supposed tougher opponents before you get to the two major regions in your group, uh, you know, of NA and EU. It's also one of the things, right, where, I mean, PCS always kind of doesn't perform as well at Worlds, but at MSI, PCS teams typically do step up beyond gaming, PSGs of the Worlds, whoever it is. So I think it's another team that we didn't hit on too much today, but another team you definitely can't count out. So what are you guys making of the meta now, three games in? And like, I'm just, I'm like peeking yeah, back here yeah, and I'm yeah. just like, okay, we've had a fair amount of Amumu. The Seraphine has made a decent amount uh, of appearances and the Hecarim seems to be very high priority. Like those are the three champions so far that have kind of stood out the most to me in terms of their prevalence. Mm. I'm seeing a lot of Yumi bans. So, well. which is interesting considering that yeah. we kind of thought maybe the nerfs were just enough to push her out. Yeah, but I, Yumi Misfortune is also a very good combo. Yeah. Misfortune is a good AD carry. So I think there's enough pairings that make Yumi very good. And if things like Hecarim or Sejuani become considered more powerful, then the whole meta can, can it's going to like twist on itself a little bit because the Yumi comps can come back in. I'm, I'm very interested. I, I think the only things that we've seen for certain, right, is that like engaged supports are back like 100%. Except for EG, we're playing Lux. <laughs> yeah, except for EG. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you can engage. Yeah, Flash true. Binding. We saw him try. Yeah, by dying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well. Fight started. It's over. Well, you, I mean, if it works, it works. <laughs> if, if, if you don't get the, in, the binding engaged, then the Flash will come back to bite you. All right, on the other side, we got Mad Lions returning to the stage opposite the pride of the TCL in the uh, Desert Dennis Bank Wildcats. Catch you there.